customer loyalty is important, but also employee loyalty is important also. So I think, uh, especially in the last sort of year, we know that the whole world of work has changed so much. And for me, organizations need to be intentional about how they design that employee experience. Hello and welcome to a whole new episode of Ingati CX. I'm your host, Tansmi, and we're really glad to have all of you join us today. On this show, we talk to CX and tech experts from around the world. We explore, uncover, and share fresh insights on creating experiences that your customers will remember and look forward to. Engati is the world's leading multilingual, no-code, digital CX platform available across 14 channels with 45,000 solutions created across 186 countries in every domain and use case. Engati has also been recognized as a top platform by Inc. Magazine, Tech World, CIO Magazine, and many others. We run the Engati blog, video channel, and the Engati CX podcast, receiving upwards of 400,000 visitors annually. And now for our guest, Jonathan Daniels is a co-founder of CX Brazil, a network in Belgium to support professionals to share, learn, and advance. He's also the director of CX Centric, a consultancy which has been open for over five years. He specializes in transforming organizations to become customer-centric. Jonathan has helped many household names improve the quality of what they are delivering to their customers, including Nissan, Lloyd's Bank, ING, Sodexo, and National Grid. If you want a different perspective, if you want to be entertained, and if you want to be inspired, then choose Jonathan. When you choose Jonathan, you're choosing someone who's on fire. He's passionate about CX and his ability to engage and entertain makes for an extremely unique and exciting experience. Welcome to the show, Jonathan. We're really glad to have you today. And Donnie, thank you. It's a pleasure. And thank you for the lovely introduction there. I'm really glad you liked it. But before we dive into our interview with Jonathan, don't forget to subscribe to Ingati and tap on the bell icon below to get access to exclusive content from thought leaders around the game. So diving right into the interview, Jonathan, my first question to you is, analysts predict that in the coming decade, CX will provide a competitive advantage and that businesses will compete on CX rather than features and pricing. What do you think about this statement? Yeah, I think we are already seeing this happen. I think um, the paradigm has shifted. So um, before 10 years ago, 20 years ago, it was about acquiring customers. Now it's about keeping customers, especially because uh, a lot of products are basically commoditized and there's a lot of subscriptions going around. So for me, I think um, we've got to actively encourage loyalty. And I think that's the, the crucial uh, point here. And to do this, I think there's, there's two things. Firstly, it's about the relationship, managing that relationship and managing the experience. So showing that your business actually appreciates the customer, showing that your business actually cares um, and it's answering questions like, are you making your customer's life more stressful or less stressful? These are important questions to ask. I think the second part is looking about rather than cost and price, it's about value. We want to be able to say, what do we get for our money? What value do I get for my money? So I think those are the two aspects uh, which are very important and that they will continue to be more and more important over the next decade. So on the same, uh, do you think that the more the number of products and services in the same product range come in, the more these two uh, points would become important to compete on? Um, yeah, so did you ask the more products, the, the more products there are out there, the more important customer experiences. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, at the moment, what we're seeing is, especially we're talking about, a lot of times we talk about digital products, especially, and in the digital world, it's just becoming more and more easy to create products. Yeah, there's a lot of work going on in that space to be able to basically lower the amount of time and effort you need to be able to create a product. So what we're seeing is a lot more organizations or even people, startups, 
starting things up, creating good products, and then the product's there and it's in the marketplace. Uh, if you want CRM software, for instance, there's like thousands of CRM solutions available. So then the question yeah. is, what can you do to, to, off, to show or propose something that's different to what's in the marketplace? And it's not going to be uh, just a core feature that you have because that feature can be copied very quickly by competitors. It's got to be something else. You've got to work out um, something else. And, and really, that has got to be the experience. It's got to be the experience that you give, that you offer. Uh, you, it's that relationship. And then that leads to loyalty, basically. And then that leads to increase sales, increase um, uh, reduced churn, so increased retention. And that basically leads to business growth. So this is what we are needing uh, at the moment, Chandani. Absolutely. So moving on to my next question, while uh, B2C has made a significant progress in customer experience, B2B is still lagging behind. So how can B2B companies make a CX push? Yeah, it's a good question. It's a, it's a very good question. And it is a shame to see these B2B companies lagging. But um, I think we have hit a point where we're seeing a change already, yeah? So B2B is changing now. And Gata, you're, you're an example. So what we're seeing is uh, more human-centered approaches, yeah? So <clears throat> normally in a B2B situation, it's B2B, it's business to business, but at the end of the day, you normally have a person interacting with someone else. Or if it's a large organization, you'll interact with a few people directly, and a few other people indirectly, yeah? So a few customers indirectly. Uh, and then also finally, if you think about it, for small and medium sized companies, yeah? So say medium is like less than 40 or 50 people in the organization. Normally in a B2B space, you're probably gonna be dealing with one or maybe two people anyway uh, in that business. So in that sense, when it, when it comes around to renewing the, the service, because normally we're talking about uh, the subscription model that generally now, that's like the, the way of doing business. When it comes to renewals, they'll ask the question, they'll speak to the main contact and they'll say, okay, um, how was your experience? Did you get value for money? And did they appreciate us? And, and, and do you think that they've done a good job? Yeah, so if you're not managing that experience like a pro proactively, then you risk losing that customer to someone else, another organization is going to take them. So I think we are seeing uh, that that um, this human-centered approach is really moving into the B2B world. I think the other, th other thing that we're seeing is there's some customers who manage the emotional response uh, as well. So basically what we see is with every interaction that someone has with a business, whether it's B2B or B2C, they have a, an emotional response yeah so that's all around managing empathy and we're seeing businesses working in this space as well and with that emotional response then comes subsequent behaviors and then measured outcomes so what we're seeing here is businesses who actually can manage that empathy looking at the emotional response and then actually working out okay if i do this if i do why the customer will feel like this in that case all of these customers are probably feeling sad at the moment or annoyed at the moment. What can we proactively do about this to, in, in, to stop them from churning, etc.? So there's a big uh, piece of work that can be done in the B2B space around managing customer empathy. So when we talk about B2B and you said re reducing churn is the motive, are there some tips uh, you can talk about on how B2B companies can reduce churn? Reducing churn is a very interesting question. I think for, for us, um, uh, what we've seen is that, yeah, with the rise in, in subscriptions, et cetera, the importance of loyalty, basically loyalty has never been more important. And what we call this is uh, organizations need to implement what we call a loyalty layer, yeah? So that starts with number one, having a customer vision and strategy. Yeah. Number two, having customer experience innovation mechanisms and, and uh, 
mechanisms to improve and manage that experience. The third is having a proactive customer success operation. So making sure that when your customer interacts with your product or service, they are actually getting what they need to get out of it. They're getting the value out of it. The other aspect is the technology layer. So having that te technology layer to give you the customer insights, the knowledge about those customers, so that you can work out and segment your market better, etc. Sorry, there's a bit of noise there. Uh, <coughs> and finally, underpinning all this is customer-centric principles and practices. So actually looking at um, how you share knowledge, how you share information across your organization, centering and restructuring your organization around offering customer value um, and making sure that you are profitable at the same time. And in order to be able to deliver this, really the activation mechanism it always starts with the leadership. So at CX Eccentric, we train and coach executives to understand the power of customer centricity, the power of customer experience, and we really want leadership that empowers their, their employees. We want leadership that actually invests in customer experience. So when I say invest, I mean investing like money, investing time, uh, investing resource. Uh, and we need uh, leaders who lead by example. Yeah, so they're not just talking the talk, they're walking the walk. Um, so I think that you can see the, the positive impact of investing in customer experience, especially reducing churn is one thing, but actually growing your business is another thing. Yeah. So if you look at, for instance, a very successful organization, uh, Blah Blah Car, yeah, they were a startup a few years ago. They recently won a funding round. It was in April 2021 of $115 million. Their motto is the member is the boss. Yeah, the member is the boss. That is their motto, a very customer-centric organization. So you can see that customer experience, yeah, it can help you reduce, re, re, uh, increase retention or reduce churn, but also that loyalty aspect is a key driver in increasing profits, increasing the amount of sales uh, that you need to, to really grow your business. So moving Sorry. on to my next question. Could you give our audience some key points on how to develop a customer experience vision and strategy? Yeah, thanks. So firstly, customer experience vision and strategy is basically crucial to be able to set the North Star or the direction for your organization. And a lot of companies, a lot of organizations, they don't have this at the moment. So it's crucial. It's one of the, the places to start. So I would say first thing is, know who you are in terms of who your organization is and where you fit in the ecosystem and in the world of the customers. So that's the first thing. Identify the shared problem. So before we used to say that the customer is someone who has a need and the, 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 the supplier is someone who fulfills the need. Now we're seeing that that need and that problem is becoming more and more complicated. So actually it's more of a case of um, the customer and the supplier working together on that shared problem together to get the required outcome so you support that customer all the way through. So I think identify clearly that shared problem, that sh the problem that you share between your customer uh, and the, the wider stakeholders. Look and understand and know what you stand for. You've got to have a clear position of what you stand for and what you don't stand for. This, this is very important as well. Also, know who your customer is, know what they want, know what they appreciate, know what their challenges are, um, know um, the future risks that they have in their organization as well, or if it's individuals, the, the risk on an individual level also. These are also all important things to help you really position your customer experience strategy the best way. Also, finally, visualize that intended experience that you want to offer. <laughs> so have a clear experience, visualize this uh, and communicate this. So if, it, if you're in a small organization, it's easier, you visualize, you communicate that. But if you're in a larger organization, often visualizing that, um, it, it, it might be different from between a sales, uh, the sales department and the marketing department or the IT department. The overall experience is the same, but you've got to put together some, some, smart, some smart goals 
around that, something that they can really truly understand and relate with. Um, so it's got to be com communicated in the right way as well. And there's lots of ways that you can um, use, and lots of tools that you can use to help. So you can do normal field studies or customer journey maps or service design maps or focus groups, uh, a day in the life of the customer, expectation maps. There's loads of different tools that we have available that we can use to help. So before we wrap up with the interview, Jonathan, are there any other sound bites that you'd like to leave our audience with? Yeah, Chandani, listen, it's been so nice to speak to you. I think what I'd like to leave is, yeah, customer experience is great, but it's delivered by the employees. So for me, investing in your employees is one of the most important things that you can do, yeah? Um, customer loyalty is important, but also employee loyalty is important also. So I think, uh, especially in the last sort of year, we know that the whole world of work has changed so much. And for me, organizations need to be intentional, intentional about how they design that employee experience. Because through that employee experience, number one, they deliver a better, better customer experience, but also number two, they increase employee loyalty and also incre increase the general performance of employees, yeah? Employee loyalty is very clear and very important because it means that they're going to speak positively about your company when they talk to, to customers. And also when they talk to friends and family, they can re recommend the products and services of your company to others. Um, they're going to stay in the future, keeping all of their knowledge, that, they, that, that intrinsic knowledge that they learn on the job, it stays in your organization. And it means they're less likely to leave overall. So for me, employee experience should be the focus for 2021 for me. It's been a difficult, difficult year over the last one year since the pandemic started and we've all had to adapt. But I think for the next few months, I think it was very important for organizations to invest in that employee experience. And first of all, teach. First of all, listen and actually be open and innovative about the solutions that they can provide and, and think about for their employees going forward. This is absolutely amazing, Jonathan. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Your insights were really valuable and I know our audience is going to enjoy the interview. Oh, Chandani, listen, it was a real pleasure. Um, I just love the, the, uh, the conversation and I hope that we can keep this going. So sure, absolutely. So we'll be back with a new episode and a brand new expert soon. So stay tuned and we'll see you around for the next one. Thank you.